Beth Taylor from the Samson Family YMCA Teaching Kitchen, and this is our first episode of Who's Cooking at the Samson Y? And we're really thrilled to have Sylvia Catello. She's a local, local food blogger with the, um, her, her blog is called The Nighttime Cook. Yes. Got it right? <laughs> Where she'll find wonderful recipes, family stories, and video tutorials. I'll cut, like one of your most recent things was how to make hot chocolate bombs, which yes. I think is <laughs> going to be huge. Yeah. Yes. So she was very gracious enough to come in here and spend her time with us to teach us a recipe from her website, which is going to be a vegetable terrine. Um, or a vegetable lasagna, a lasagna that's very keto friendly. So we will have uh, Sylvia tell you a little bit about the recipe. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be her sous chef today and we'll get started cooking and talk to her about her other job and her blog as we go along. Yeah, thank so you. Take it away, Sylvia. Thanks for having me. Yes, today we're going to make a vegetable lasagna. There's no um, pasta involved. It's all veggies. So if, you'll, if you're on a keto diet or wow moment yeah, at your, at your wow dining right. table. Right. So, <laughs> so uh, well, we'll start with the peppers. So you could slice these and put them in your under your boiler if you like, but today we're going to put them right on the stove here. And we're, what we want to do is we want to actually get the skin charred. We're going to get it completely black, and we're not going to eat that part. Uh, we're going to put it in a bowl afterwards. And Okay. So that's the first thing that we're doing. Keep well, those on? Yeah, we can put all those on. Um, while we're doing that, we're going to go ahead and cut our zucchini. Now, this is probably, we have four zucchini here. They're pretty decent size. It just depends on what size um, dish that you're going to use. I use an 8 by 8 dish. We have a dish over here. Um, I'll show you. You can just use whatever. Just taking this little bit off 
existed now for seven years since the Peach and Kitchen opened, I believe, um, in 2014. So we run classes for um, five-year-olds all the way up through adults. <laughs> awesome. Right now we're doing a lot in our virtual teaching kitchen. Mm -hmm. So um, that gets people in to cook with us from home, and we've had a lot of fun with that. I think what they like the most and what people are really missing at this point is the sense of community that we yeah. have in the kitchen. They all love eating and learning new things and trying new flavors. That's all great. But, you know, we, you know, we cook together and eat together and, you know, we've had to kind of retool. But uh, we're, we're looking at ways to come back. So tell us a little bit, Sylvia, about what made you start a food blog. Well, I kind of... published in the Post-Gazette. Yeah, okay. in the Pittsburgh Quarterly, the Post-Gazette, um, some, other, some other places as well. Now, I know you wrote this lovely, it was like a poem in, in Post-Gazette that it was um, the meatball poem, right? Or yeah, it was, a, it was like a first person essay that oh, okay. was about, it was called, um, I love you, here's a meatball. <laughs> <laughs> Which is so Italian. <laughs> so Italian, because um, we, that's just how my family has always, and so many other and my, one of my favorite things to do growing up is I would come early, you know, my grandma would be cooking, and she would get the meatballs done first before she would put them in the sauce, and uh -huh. we would run in from playing outside, and she would give us a freshly cooked meatball, Oh and yeah. she would sprinkle it with Parmesan cheese, and put it on a fork, and wrap the stem of the fork with a paper towel. Oh. And, like, and I do that for my children, and it's just a really... It's a nice nurturing grandma thing. <laughs> yeah. Grandma thing. And my yeah. kids will ask me for it too. So it's nice to pass those traditions on. Absolutely. But I do. I write a lot about food. <laughs> and it's exciting. It's like I can't get away from it. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. So I have all mine sliced over here. So what okay. I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of lay them out in a single layer. Okay. I'll keep working on mine. Sure. And I'm going to season them salt and pepper. I like to use kosher salt. If you use table salt, use a lot less. People don't realize, I don't think, how many different types of salt. Like you said, your friend is coming. He owns a salt yes, place. Yes, he owns a salt place. Yeah, yes. um, there's so many different types of salts. Uh, I like to use kosher salt a lot. A lot. So I like to just kind of take a nice pinch and sprinkle kind of maybe a couple inches above. And that's a really good technique that Sylvia is showing you there, is doing it a couple inches above. That gives you a lot more control uh, as to how much salt goes into a dish. And we're always, you know, cautious of that and don't want to over-salt things. So if you sprinkle it from above, I tell the kids always let it snow down. It on. <laughs> so um, that really gives you some nice distribution there. Okay. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this bowl over here and I'm going to put you could just drizzle, I guess you could drizzle, it would get pretty messy here. So I'm just going to put a little bit of our olive oil. You need about a cup for this recipe. I know it seems like a lot, but we're grilling a lot of vegetables. Um, and it's olive oil, so it's good for you. So we're going to put that in, and you can also just season the olive oil with salt and pepper, and then you can put some of these in, and kind of get in there with your hands. I wouldn't be a good Italian if I didn't do that, right? <laughs> zucchini is going to shrink up a bit too, It'll right? shrink up a little bit, and if you can remember what side you season, you can go back and season the other side. Uh, put the <laughs> season side down, right? And then so I 
to do that. Is a limit probably, right? Okay, to leave those in, or do we want to sear them more? Or? I'm going to turn them over. Oh, beautiful. Nice. Yeah. off. This one's super black <laughs> and this one is too. Move these around a little bit. Our hood is on so it's pulling, kind of diverting the flame and making it a little, okay, we're getting this nice and charred. And it's not, while it's charring and giving that really good roasted red pepper flavor, it's also going to soften them a bit too. Yeah. And again, if it, I do love the, the taste of the char and that's mm -hmm. why I yeah. the zucchini and may I borrow the salt or the pepper yes. I have the salt yes. <laughs> and I'll get Here these ready to go on the grill for you okay perfect thank you ma'am okay so what 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 do you think the most popular recipe on your blog has been that you've done that's gotten the most traction <laughs> or the, the most you know, um, used is cheering that one. <laughs>
trying that one out in the kitchen kitchen. Yeah, happy to. Yeah. That sounds fabulous. Yeah. And you, you just mentioned again, too, that you work for a local restaurant. So why don't you tell us a little bit about what you do and that restaurant and what they've been doing to survive the pandemic. Yeah. And yeah, because we want you as much as possible, you know, support our local kitchens and the mm -hmm. people that are struggling to stay afloat during all of this. Yeah. So tell us about Girasoli. Yeah, I work at Girasoli Restaurant. It's on Copeland Avenue. So time grows on a woody kind of stem that's not real 
digestible. So she's just stripping the time off to get it ready to throw in. And then what else can I do for you? Could I get the goat cheese ready? We can get the goat cheese ready. Okay. So all we're going to do, okay. Yeah, I lost my, um. <laughs> okay, Amy, I'm back on. You all right? Okay. <laughs> I lost my earpiece. All this technology is new to new to Miss Beth. Okay. So um, those are we're going to use about eight ounces, if not. It depends really how much goat cheese you like. I actually really love goat cheese. I love. Goat so we, well, this is going to be twelve. Yeah. So we yeah. can use all twelve. I'd be fine. With yeah. <laughs> Um, the thing with goat cheese, some people are, you know, a little, they might have had it and it's a strong tangy flavor. This is a perfect introduction to it because the tang is going to be balanced out with all those delicious vegetables you have. So you can kind of sneak it in there for people that are kind of wary of goat cheese. Yeah, absolutely. And you could also use something else. Like Sylvia was saying, if you wanted to have a, more of a Mexican flair, you know, doing the cilantro and the cojicha. Um, but you want something that stands up a little. I wouldn't put ricotta in this, I don't I think. Not. No, I think it would be too watery and, yeah. The thing is, is you don't, I mean, you don't need to have it. You'll get a very nice, clean slice. Yes. Um, and it's, it's a pretty impressive, I think. It's <laughs> think that you may be wilting it is going to lose some of that water content of the spinach and so your overall dish isn't going to be watery. Beautiful. So Amy, can we slide over here to me and the peppers? Can you see them? Hear better? Perfect, okay, so I'm using my asbestos kitchen hands. You would probably want this to cool a little bit more, but in the interest of time, I'm gonna get these going. You can see the peppers have really nicely softened and then that black skin just slides right off. So again, after they're really cooled, this would even be something fun for your kids to do. It's slimy, it's burnt, you know. All, you know, you have, you have a, a school-age little boy that probably love this mess. <laughs> <laughs> but he would love that. That would be like slime, right? Yeah. 
So after I get all of this mainly pulled away, I'm going to run over to the sink while Sylvia keeps cooking and give them a quick rinse into the colander and <laughs> cool them down a little bit because they are steamy. Okay. But yeah, but this, yeah, go, so go ahead, Sylvia. I'll work on this. Sure. Do you want the um, peppers in strips or kind of slabs or? I normally do, I slice them in strips, but you okay. can slice them however you want. And that's well, fine. Yeah, How, like about like this? Some of those peppers. And we used um, like a, you know, tri-colored peppers. I just like the different colors. Um, but you can certainly just do red if that's all you like or that's all available. Um, they're all very sweet and delicious, so there's our fun tool. I'll give, yeah, I'll give you some to start and layering, yeah. yeah. We won't look at my messy cutting board over here. <laughs> well, it's hard not to get messy with these, but I think they're worth making. So, um, Sylvia, have you ever met Maria Moranti down in Bloomfield? Um, I have. I have gone in there and met her for like two seconds. Oh, I've been in the school. <laughs> so we'll have to talk more about that. She's just this fabulous uh, store owner, and uh, she cooks there and she has uh, classes yeah the seven fishes and the um the christmas the bafana or the 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 celebration with the donkey around christmas yeah yeah I'm really a American. That's yeah <laughs> well so is she but she grew up she's one of seven and i interviewed her for my master's thesis so you know so she <laughs> She talks about how on the weekends they would have all the fancy vegetables on for Sunday dinner. You know, so this, I was just channeling Maria. I'm thinking this is a fancy Sunday dinner <laughs> vegetable. You know what else? It's like, um, it was really a treat when I was a kid. I didn't like it when I was a kid. I love it now. But it's made the same way. Just, you know, Italians just do everything, just like the best ingredients. And 
Mm -hmm. Okay. The broccoli rob, the broccoli rob yeah. Yeah. Actually love, they prefer yes. Keep passing those over. Oh, sure. Beautiful. So that's really it. So what I'm going to do now is drizzle it with a little bit of olive oil and sprinkle it with some of our fresh thyme. And then we're going to put some spinach on and then repeat it all. So while you're doing that, I just want to talk a little bit about cutting the roasted pepper and dealing with it. I cut the top off of this one so you can see. You still have all those seeds in there. So I'm just pulling that out into our compost. And the veins just pull out really easily like this, too. And also, when you cut it open, there's going to be, from all of that steaming and cooking and the water content of the pepper, there's going to be a lot of moisture in there. So I just kind of spilled that out and mopped it up with a paper towel or your dish rag. And then I'm just cutting this in nice strips for Sylvia. Thank you. <laughs> this is a fun family thing you could do, you know. You can see it. this goes a lot faster with a couple hands. So, yeah. <laughs> everything, right? Get everybody to work. Yeah. But um, this smells amazing. I love the smell of the char on here. Yeah. Behind you with the last of this. Okay. Thank you very much. So when you eat this, you can serve this just on its own. You know, I have this is actually my brother in law's favorite thing I make. Oh nice. It's his favorite thing I make. I'm just gonna put some spinach on here. And I do make it a lot in the spring and the summertime. It's just very light and refreshing. Mm -hmm. Yes, oh yeah. <laughs> and um, they make, again, you can make it yourself, but I really love to just go to, you know, the Penn Mac or Labs or wherever mm -hmm. and get a jar of, um, like, a tomato chutney or a tomato Oh, tomato yeah, tomato, sure. Um, and serve that with this. Oh, but yeah. Today I got yeah. some uh, balsamic glaze. And I oh, that that's beautiful, glaze. yeah. Thank you, Amy. <laughs> my second layer down, and then we're going to just repeat it. Um, going in a different ethnic direction, but I think it would yes. work on here. Have you ever had, like, the roasted eggplant and tomato spread that's sold in a jar? Um, it's Eastern European origin, and I know they sell it down in uh, Salonika. Um, it's, yeah, it's a wonderful store. It's called um, Lutnitsa, and that's a wonderful condiment. Even like to put, you know, on, on top of that would be great, or to use as a sauce on a flatbread, or, oh, yeah. yeah. There's the one, is it a Turkish restaurant? It's on, it's in, um, oh gosh, it's in, uh, I can't think of the place. It's not Swissville. Edgewood? Edge, no, the other way. Regent Square. <laughs> Um, Istanbul Grill? It's that place. So I, I think what you're talking about, I've had there. Yes, I wouldn't be surprised, yeah. Pizza uh huh. And, and hummus, and yeah, really delicious. So. so, see, you know, I scare some people when I say we're making a vegetarian dish, but it can be so delicious and filling. Right, sidekick Amy? Yeah. <laughs> She's giving us a thumbs up. <laughs> right, serve it next to some fried chicken. I know that's not what we're doing. Or even, like, uh, one, uh, one of our trainers made a wonderful um, spinach and ricotta pasta that, that pulled
cools together on top of the stove in like 20 minutes on a weeknight. And we're going to do that in a cooking class coming up soon. But, you know, with a lean protein, and even if you want to use a, um, a, a gluten-free pasta or something with that, you can. Uh, but that, that was a wonderful meal. I, grilled, I roasted some salmon with that. And, yeah, we're going to do that as a cook-along class for virtual cooking at home in April. So, um, yeah, while, while you're finished putting that together, I'm going to pull your lovely, uh, you know, from the, from the ma magic of TV, Sylvia was kind enough to bring us a already assembled terrine that she can flip out and show us how beautiful it's going to look. Yeah. Family picnic or something. It's good to go. It's, it's yeah. Nice, you know? So there you have it. Beautiful. Okay. And the rest of that, I would be chopping that up and throwing it on a salad. <laughs> So this is served cold. It's served cold. Okay, yeah, delicious. Well, served at room temperature. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I want to do it this way. And flip it out. And cross your fingers. <laughs> I have faith, Sylvia. <laughs> Maybe. The pl let me just it's actually cold. there. You there. Go. That was plastic, right? There you go. Gorgeous. Oh my gosh, that's beautiful. Can you see that? Can you see all the layers? I don't know what angle that would be best for you. But you have your layers of zucchini and goat cheese and your roasted peppers and your spinach, and we're going to cut it. And Beth's going to try some. Of course. <laughs> wow, that's a big knife. <laughs> that's the first one I grabbed. Okay, I'm, I'm shutting the door this time, Amy, I promise. So we will get with our YouTube channel. We'll get a way to link you to Sylvia's blog. And also, if you want to get the recipe ahead of time, just visit her blog, which is the nighttimecook.com, right? Yes. Nighttimecook.com. And you'll, you know, you'll find all kind of fun stuff, including that boozy cocktail as well as um, the hot chocolate bombs, you know? That's right. That's right. <laughs> all kind of deliciousness, yeah. And she even has this great little part of um, her blog where she gives you... Um, hints of places to shop and things, you know, yeah. tools that she uses in her kitchen that she really yeah, likes. Yeah. yeah. Page that mm -hmm. just tools I seem to use over and over and over. Yes. Like yeah. So, oh, it's gorgeous. Isn't it nice? Absolutely. Here's one for okay. you. And we have some for Amy. <laughs> <laughs> Amy's happy. Take a little bite of this. Yeah. Mm. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, the first thing that hit me was the char from the pepper, and it's so good. Okay, so thank you for joining us today at the Teacher Kitchen and Who's Cooking at the Samson Family Y. And we'll be back next week with another episode.